Welcome to this SVG event. Um, I'm Mike Ward from Singular Live. We're a cloud native graphics platform that hopefully some of you have heard from. Um, today, I'm joined by Andy Bill from BT Sport, and we just wanted to talk a little bit about BT's experience of using or testing with various cloud based production techniques. So, Andy, um, anything further you want to say at this point, having just introduced you? Hi, Mike. Well, only that we've uh, been on this little journey looking at cloud production for a few a few months now and uh, very much uh, involving, of course, you guys uh, and other cloud providers. Um, and it's been really interesting, actually, really like I think we'll talk a little bit more now in this conversation about what we've discovered and the opportunities that cloud affords us as a sports broadcaster. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just taking it back then, where did it where did that begin for you and, and BT and, and what were your motivations for looking at this? Well, I mean, really, it all started with the pandemic, right? So we, as you know, we we rapidly transformed our business from a reasonably traditional broadcaster with, you know, outside broadcast trucks and everything else um, into this really accelerated remote production workflow. We knew we wanted to do remote production. We, we laid out a three-year plan in 2019 where we wanted to go on a journey and migrate into remote production for lots of reasons, including sustainability and including efficiency uh, work-life balance, you know, people welfare, all these good reasons. And we started that little journey of doing our National League coverage, but we thought it would take us two or three years to, to get further. And COVID accelerated that completely. And, and as everyone well knows, we rapidly transformed, as did all of our other peers in, you know, in the industry, we rapidly transformed them, our businesses to being remote. Um, but that was sort of more traditional equipment, more traditional hardware and infrastructure, which just operated in a, in a remote way. Uh, from different remote control centers, either in our own base in Stratford or with partners in uh, Harwickham or in uh, Hempstead in the case of graphics and things. So, so it was it was remote production, a decentralized production, but done with traditional hardware. And really the next obvious step was cloud production. Like, I think cloud production is really interesting because if you look at uh, the evolution of a cloud production tool set in the last two, three, four, five years and compare that maybe with the more traditional broadcast trajectories of things like 2110, clearly the change of pace in Cloud production is is rapid, unbelievably rapid, and so very, very interesting. And so we wanted to really start to explore the opportunities that gave us um, and how we could sort of further transform our business to become even more agile. Yeah, bear in mind that the world we work in, in the SVG world, the sports production is a really for everyone is a really peaky trophy world. You know, we live in a world where the sports rights come in in um, you know, in, in, in bursts of peaks and troughs and bursts, and so to be, the ability to be able to scale and be agile and how we have facilities is is really useful um, for us both commercially and operationally. So we so cloud's very interesting um, for us to look at. Yeah, and obviously, well, as you've touched on, you've kind of migrated through the sort of virtualized services that you did initially. Now looking at more sort of cloud native solutions. Um, where are things in terms of your expectations? You know, and, and what what your where you would think people would be in that regard. So we started looking at it and then we had an interesting, a really interesting project came up working with our friends at Sky and BBC and the Premier League uh, and you guys, of course, uh, around IBC last year, late last year, looking at uh, whether cloud production specifically would answer the question of more sustainable production. You know, we made great progress with the remote production we already implemented because of COVID and we know that's been amazingly transformative from a carbon footprint point of view. But that project was really to sort of answer the question that had been posed at so many of these conferences like SVG and like IBC and everything else where people kept saying, you know, cloud tools will be more efficient. It will reduce the footprint. It will drive down carbon emissions. So we, we really set ourselves a down task of answering the question, will that, will that help? Can it help? And a subsequent a set of questions to do with other tools fit for production? Are they good enough editorially? Are the interfaces fit for purpose? Is the connectivity and signals secure? It was dealing with really high value rights, so it has to be secure, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it was answering that key enabling question and then checking that all the other things which are really important to us were possible. So we did that little project which, which sort of came together in December and really opened for us, we just brought our eyes to the real art of the possible um, and the real capability that exists right now within cloud production tools. And on the back of that successful trial, we went on to produce um, uh, our live Ashes uh, highlights, was well, not really a highlight show, it's sort of a chat show called Ashes Daily, which was a show that followed straight on the back of our overnight live Ashes um, coverage, where we had uh, more of a podcast style of guys in a, in a cricket club in Victoria chatting about what happened overnight, about the England being trashed yet again, <laughs> in a sort of, sort of laid back, um, relaxed, funny kind of way, but used a cloud production system called Mavis, which is a um, 
a SaaS system, so you just buy the buy as a product and integrate it with your uh, single live um, graphics plug straight in. And, and what's really brilliant about that was the only people who had at the cricket club were a camera op, a sound assistant, uh, a production coordinator, and, and, and the four members of the on-screen team. Everyone else was remote. And in fact, we started off collectively in December all together in the same physical um, space in Stratford. By the time we got to Boxing Day, we had obviously... <laughs> No one wanted to come in. Everyone was at home. You know, the, um, the dish lay peas were in you know, Wales and south of England and up north because it just works. And one of the really brilliant enablers about, you know, and cloud production, you can literally be anywhere, uh, tr truly, as long as there's a, enough connectivity to enable the, the connectivity yeah. piece. So, so to answer your actual question, I think it's come a huge way and it's and definitely capable. There are still a lot of things to do and there are still some big holes that need filling. And Certainly at the small end of the market, I think it's brilliant. And it's it's growing now and it's going to become more and more capable, I think, over the next 12 months. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things through our experience of working with you has been the fact that you're testing a lot of different technologies, you know, lots of different platforms. And you obviously work with lots of different suppliers. I know, you know obviously, with Move and Austin Elliott, and, and you've done a great job bringing those people in to actually get them testing it as well. And, and I think that's where, from our side of things, the cloud-based product the platforms they're sort of working in an environment where they have to collaborate, where they have to be, you know, operable by anyone. Um, and what, so yeah. what, what's been the experience so far from your, your various teams in that regard? Well, I, think, I think you've answered, you sort of alluded to it in the question, Mike, which is that what I find amazing is the speed of which you can start to onboard these services. You know, exactly to your point, in the first project we worked with Move on the, uh, on, the, on, the IBC, on the IBC Accelerator and on the Ashes Daily, and they had about four days notice that we, we asked them to work with us. And they, 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 they um, yeah, had a half day training course for, I think, with you guys, maybe less than that, maybe, maybe two hours, and then next thing you know, we're using it live. In the same way, our engineers were building the systems up, you know, with literally two or three days notice in the, in the vision mixing side and the sound mixing side. So the speed to market of this stuff is just phenomenal. And, yeah. and, and recently, like just this morning, we were doing, um, we're doing a live Scottish rugby uh, thing for, for BT Corporate as part of our sponsorship of the Scottish rugby team. Again, using single but this time, all Stenelia operating, operating the system. And again, they had about a day's notice and built all the graphics and implemented them. And in the same way, we had different engineers working here with this time Intelligenic. And so the ability to bring in partners and bring in the people that we need to work with, be that you know audio folk, vision folk, graphics, it's, it's fantastically quick and fantastically easy. Mm. Um, and I think that's what's been really, really interesting to learn. And it truly does enable collaboration. And that's really where we've been going. It's, it's been trying to bring in our, our partners that we work with all the time um, and taking them on this journey with us. And that's what's really exciting is how fast that's, that's possible. I guess the other sort of factor is that, you know, when you're inviting and asking these people to do that, you're not actually asking them to undertake a massive expense in terms of buying out new infrastructure or hardware. You know, it's... Now, it's really and, and I think it... I agree. I think it plays to everyone's strengths. You know, the, you know, we all know that, okay, there's technical expertise or there's creative expertise needed in these tech operational or engineering roles. But tr truthfully, you're paying, you're paying for... You're not paying, you're not paying them to... Be about that. They're paying for their knowledge and their skill, and so having having to sort of be very dedicated about particular pieces of hardware is, is really takes you down a very long road because you have to buy that kit, learn it inside and out. And then you've got to be because of that investment both in the hardware and in the training that is going to be with you for a number of years. You know, if you're lucky, it's three. If you're unlucky, it's probably more like ten. You know, take a vision mixer. You have to learn a complicated vision mixer, and in reality, we we would have made a, made a hardware vision mixer last eight to ten years probably you know the, the other day we tried a visual because we didn't like it after eight minutes so we turned it off and turned a different one and that's <laughs> it sounds flippant but it's but it's the truth that's why it's that's why it's exciting and as i said the onboarding for, for the graphics tool set that we've been working with is, is exactly the same it's fantastically quick and nimble and and the ability to make changes you know what you're not know, into old-fashioned hardware and, and the associated software builds which are complicated and require dot releases and complicated you know, vendor code drops to update and you can just make a change because you realize it's not right and it's available within, within half an hour you know so that's that's what's brilliant i think yeah well look, we are pretty much out of time um there's a lot more we could talk about uh but for now andy i just want to say thank you very much for you know all the experimentation and, and thanks very much for your time today now pleasure as always mike thanks very much cheers <laughs>